No, I'm not paying for anything. Well, actually, one of the applications that's used very extensively on GNU slash Linux are things like Blender, things like all kinds of proprietary applications for uh, rendering, uh, not just rendering farm, but actually rendering on a desktop. Uh, do you know Maya 3D? Or Maya? I've, I've worked with it. Uh, they, they tend to use it on all kinds of environments. I believe they use even Red Hat, and historically maybe they use some Unix Solaris uh, boxes to do that. Uh, and that's just because it's a very solid environment, very safe environment, very consistent environment to work with, especially if they go for the big vendors, things like uh, Red Hat Enterprise uh, Linux. Um, and, and from this, from that perspective, if you consider the fact, and bear in mind that lots of the users of Photoshop and Windows, they don't actually use it legally. I should mention that. Uh, so they don't have to pay for it. Uh, if, if you were to target the professional developers, people who work 9 to 5, I believe some of them would be willing with Adobe's endorsement to actually just work in a dedicated Linux box. That's, that basically Photoshop is being tailored to, to work perfectly with. Uh, in the same way that a studio. I mean, that's just kind of a proposal, I suppose. I mean, maybe maybe the more sensible solution, and uh, like I said before, I think Michael was right. I think it is too much of a big ask to expect Adobe to provide their product for every single uh, distribution and uh, in order to make it function at every distribution. But having said that, how about the alternative of um, working with the wine developers to ensure wine compliance? That certainly would be a way where... A Photoshop could be run on yeah. any Linux distribution. Well, it, already, it already works quite okay. I don't know about the latest version yeah, CS something, but yeah, I know I, was the say, I, I don't follow Photoshop at all, and I certainly don't follow its um, its functionality with a, within Wine. So I, I couldn't say, but I'm assuming that it's not currently at a stage where everything works. I think it's safe to say that's not the case. So, um, so Michael, you were going to come in before. Um, you're going to say something. I don't know if you've lost that train of thought. Whether you've still got it. Um, well, I. <laughs> I'm trying to remember where we were. At we, the we were talking about Photoshop on um, and oh, Linux. Yeah. All I'm gonna say, so with my comments, I'm just going on what some of the developers at Adobe were yeah publicly said, where they listed the reasons why. Yeah, they keep researching it, but they you know they don't think they'd make money on it, and it would be too hard to support with with the current set of the tools. Which uh, let me jump topics here a little bit. One of the things I've always said is open source does things amazingly well on the back end. From what I know of WebKit, it's amazing. From what I know of, of Linux, the kernel itself, not the desktop, yeah, just the back end of it, it does amazingly well. I was talking to someone I'm very close with um, who's been a, a programmer for 20 plus years and, and from everything I know of, of him and from people that work with him is just an amazing programmer. He's been working with OpenSSL recently and just was ripping into how poorly it's coded, how, how, and I haven't looked at the code, and if I did, it would barely mean anything to me, but how you know, variable names are just named arbitrarily, horribly, that they're using tons of um, macros, not using local and global variables correctly. Um, I mean, just all sorts of horrible, horrible coding practices going into at least that example of an open source product. And so it even makes me question the back end. It, and it never happens in proprietary. Oh, it, it, well, he has well, so all know, sorts of secret. proprietary. <laughs> so, you know, he was saying it's, he's never seen anything working with you know, all sorts of new programmers. He's never seen anything that's out in the wild, if you will, have coded you as poorly as OpenSSL. No, I've, have I've you heard of I've, people who develop a debug because people did look at the source code. Uh, people under, it, you'd be surprised by how code is written when the person writing the code knows that nobody's going to be able to see that except maybe the boss or the colleague. Uh, actually, usually, maybe that's the exception. I know I, I, I've heard this before about it. Oh, OpenSSL, by the way. I know this is one of those examples of projects where I believe they could improve the coding, but. Uh, one of the things that they do try and they have to do is try and improve the code, otherwise they'll get embarrassed because the code is out there for inspection by other people, and this could actually ruin their reputation in the uh, development world if they if they code in a very shoddy way. Um, one thing uh, one thing I was going to say though is yeah, so you you basically acknowledge that there is uh, some issue with some of the open source projects and. I, I think a better example, though, would be like to look at things like Apache or Linux, the more mature ones. And, uh... and I'd like to think that, that open. I was I, I was surprised yesterday to hear what I heard. I've I've always, from a non-programmer perspective, really admired 
the back end of a lot of this open source stuff and just to hear him ripping into it and I mean it was it was not even it was non prompted. He just he was talking about stuff he was doing at work and how he had to you know deal with this open SSL yeah. junk to use the word I mean he was he was just really frustrated. Yeah. One of the projects I, I deal with at work is a company is a, is a uh, program called Cyrus uh, and it's a uh, an IMAP server. It's actually all kinds of things. It's also an IMAP server. And I've been looking at the code, and the code is really, really nicely written, nicely constructed, but there is room for improvements, and that, that's what I'm trying to work on. So on behalf of the company, I'm trying to make some improvements to the code and push it upstream. Uh, but, but yeah, that's an example of code where I speak to the developers, and I kind of look at the code, and, yeah, it's it's pretty well, well, you know, people actually know how to use the GNU utilities and make files, and everything's pretty clean, so. Right. Well, Michael, on to your next question. But, um... <laughs> Sorry, unless you want to add, put your final word no, on that. No. Right. So this is going to go back to a little bit of the Mac stuff. Roy, you've talked about how you feel that that Macs are overpriced, that they are, you know, that Apple just adds two hundred dollars, gets commodity stuff, and and prices it too much. My question for you, I've I posted to you some of the stuff that I do that's important for me. Yeah, when I was when I was working, so I went back and forth. So maybe you didn't get an answer immediately. I, I don't have the list in front yeah. of me now, though I probably could find it. But I'm just curious, what do you think? I mean, for me specifically, and then I mean, I have a good friend who just bought a Mac yesterday. I have a relative who bought one. Well, I guess she bought it whatever a few days ago. A relative who bought it a few a couple months ago. I know all sorts of people that have gotten Macs. What do you think would have served them better, or with me specifically, what would serve me better than I have an iMac in front of me but cost me a best? Well, if you can afford a Mac, and if you're happy with the uh, degree of what I consider to be limitations of the platform, that's that's fine. I'm not, not against you buying it. Uh, I don't, I have always said that, and I've written this in my sites and stuff, that I, Apple, one of the things that Apple doesn't do is actually impose the sales of, a, of Apple products so much on people. I, I've seen some exceptions, for example, when a school is required to buy X number of uh, iPads or iPhones or something like that, and people are required to actually have it, whether they, you know, want an Apple product or not, or willing to pay for it or not. In some cases, even taxpayers in the UK were, asked to pay for like iPads for people who work in government and I think there was a big protest against that and they had to withdraw from that, especially because there is a major recession here. Uh, so I don't I don't think there is any issue. You can buy an Apple product if you want. I don't have any issues. I don't go into Mac forums and protest into people, you know, stop buying Macs and use Linux. I don't do that. Actually I, I know some people who go into Linux forums and then promote the, the Macs and trying to put down Linux as an option. So you know I, I don't see it quite Quite. I don't see the reverse of that. I, I think you accused me of that, actually. Nah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Well. And and con- and conversely, what you have to say as well is that probably this for every platform, there's always going to be an advocate who will go into the enemy's territory, in, for want of a better word, and uh, advocate their own uh, their own agenda. Um, sorry, Michael, you were saying. Um. Oh, and I had I had something <laughs> else, and it's it's gone. So there we go. You were saying that after an hour and a half, the viewers' attention span goes. I guess it's it's true for the guests also. <laughs> Dude, well, one of the places, and this comes back to third party support. One of the other, I'm going to go back to places where I think Linux still has a lot of area to catch up. Is there's all sorts of types of software where Linux, yeah, and I'm talking desktop Linux. I'm using the term Linux loosely there. But there's different software where if you want to work on a, on a Linux computer, you you essentially just can't do it or have to accept you're going to have an inferior ex, uh, an experience. Um, and I've listed some of those before. Screencasting is huge for me. That's not necessarily big for others, but I, I know a bunch of people in town. This is something that means nothing to me, but you know, a bunch of people quilt. And yeah, I'm a Mac fan, but the best quilting software is on Windows it doesn't exist for Linux at all. Um, high-end image editing. There's GIMP is great. GIMP is an amazing tool, but it's no Photoshop. And, and there's just a whole list of these type things. I agree with that you. I would love to see. And not necessarily Photoshop come there, or, or um, my screencasting tools come there. But but I'd like to see Linux grow to have a more robust set of tools to fit more people. 
I'll let Roy respond, and then I want to go back to to Michael for the final words, where he'll get his opportunity. Anything you want to add, Michael, and then I'll uh, send out the show in my typical Jerry Springer fashion, and uh, we'll do it that way. So, Roy, over to you. Uh, for yeah, there is a very classic defense. You, you've just put things a bit in reverse. You, 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 actually, you didn't, but generally, the point that you mentioned usually puts things in reverse. Uh, it's it's not exactly Linux that has to change. It's really the developer.